welcome again to our Hot Flashes in the Pan cooking video series. I'm Agnes and today we're going to be making my special Polish stuffed bell peppers. Now the reason they're Polish is because I'm Polish and everything I cook has a Polish flair to it. Now what we've done is we've bought these peppers in bulk. I usually like to buy the red, yellow, and orange peppers. They're a little milder, but you can also buy the green bell peppers, which usually are a little less expensive, and sometimes you can find them on sale. Now this package originally had six peppers in it that I got at a big box store like Costco or Sam's, but I already have three of them baking in the oven so that you can see the finished product at the end. Uh, you can get packs of three at Walmart uh, and other grocery stores, or you can buy the peppers individually. But by buying it in a bulk pack, you can make a lot of them at one time, and that way you can freeze them individually and take them out one at a time. Uh, my husband and I, especially if you get these big ones, uh, one of them is big enough to split in two and we just use one pepper for the two of us and then we make a green salad or some other vegetables and then that makes our meal. So out of a package of six peppers, we can get six meals. Uh, now if you have a big family, of course that's going to be a little different. Uh, so we are going to, you know, take these out. And we're going to put this in the trash. I always remember to have your little scrap bowl handy. Now we're going to wash these off, although they already have been washed once, but we're going to wash them off. And again. Now I'm going to take a very small paring knife and I'm going to cut right around this little green stem. See how I've cut right around that little green stem? And then you kind of jab your knife in there just enough to grab it. Don't cut yourself. And it's supposed to just pop right out of there, but of course it's not cooperating today. Okay, and there it is. And then I want to take a little bigger knife that's about the width of the pepper. And I'm going to just slice off the very top you see how I've done that? I have a little like a little hat. So this is a, about a half an inch top and then you can still see some of the meat from the seeds in here. So we're going to pull this out, put it in our little scrap bowl down here in the sink because we don't want to have all those seeds. And we're going to rinse out all those little seeds and you want to rinse out the seeds that are in the top as well. And we're going to do this with the next one. And again, try to cut as close to the little green stem as you can. And this one just popped right out. Then we're going to cut about a half inch, little top, pull out these little extra ribs that have the seeds attached to them and then rinse that out again. Let's get a couple of paper towels here to let these peppers drain a little bit. And we're just about done. This one has a little bit of a label on it, so we're gonna cut that little thing off. And again, we're going to cut right with our little paring knife, just real close to that green stem, as close as you can get it, and then just pop it out. Be sure you put it in your little scrap bowl that it doesn't go down the garbage disposal, because that will probably mess up your garbage disposal. And if you have a compost pile, that's great for your compost pile or uh, you can just you know, put it in the trash can. Okay, and we're going to pull out those few seed cores off of there and rinse that off. 
Now, the next thing we're going to do is you're just going to blanch them in a pot of hot boiling water to just kind of soften it up a little bit. But we don't want to leave them in there but just a few seconds because if not, they're going to get all mushy. So I already have my pot of boiling water here. And we're just going to drop these in. Now, I'm going to bring this over here so y'all can see what this looks like. See, they're just kind of floating in the water. And we're just going to let them sit in there for about 30 seconds or so, over like this. We'll give them a last little swirl. And then you want to pick them up and let them hold them upside down so the water's going to drain. I got my little tongs here. So you want to be sure you don't burn yourself. Let's see, let's go ahead and, I'm going to turn these upside down on the paper towels so they'll drain real good. Now my grandmother used to make these stuffed bell peppers a lot. I don't know if this is her recipe. I just kind of try to make it up as I go along. But my mom, I think, tried to make stuffed bell peppers, but I don't quite remember hers as well. Alrighty, so now we have our three bell peppers. And what we have done is taken one of our turkey, ground turkey meat mixture packages out of the freezer and let it thaw uh, that we made in one of our previous videos. And this has also beans, black beans, pinto beans, celery, bell peppers, and everything else in here. So we're going to, this is about two cups of meat, two to two and a half cups of meat, meat mixture. And we're gonna put that in our garbage. Now, we've already made some brown rice. Now, I like to use brown rice some people prefer the white rice or jasmine rice or yellow rice. I like the whole grain brown rice because it's healthier and more fiber. So you can get just the store brand or you can get a brand name, whole grain brown, or you can go with the fancy wild rice. You can also chop up some pecans or almonds in it real fine and put that in here. But um, if you use the wild rice, that really gives it an exotic flavor. Um, the whole grain brown rice is typically what I use. And it's just kind of an eyeball uh, measurement. It's kind of 50-50 uh, rice to meat mixture. And we'll just kind of mix this up. Get this, oops. Got a little bit of rice on the counter here. I made a mess. Alrighty. Now we're just going to mix this up. I like it with more rice in it, and some people like it with more meat in it. And some people don't like rice in it at all. So you just kind of you know, be creative with what you like and everything will work out just fine. All right, that looks like it's about a 50-50 mixture. So we're gonna set this aside. So as you can see, it's like half meat, half rice. All righty, then we're gonna take up, I usually like my little glass Pyrex pans. And I like to give them enough room, so I use this little square one. And I set the three peppers, actually you can do four peppers in this square one, but since I have three of them in the oven it, uh, in a little smaller pan, uh, we're gonna do it like this. All right, let me move my knives. So we're gonna take our three peppers and we're going to put like a tablespoonful. This is a little spatula that has um, 
a little indentation in it so it makes it like a spoon and we're going to fill about a tape you know a tablespoon full in each pepper then we're going to take some shredded cheese now i like to use that four cheese mexican mix which has it all shredded up and it's shredded up nice and fine or you can shred up your own cheese you can use cheddar cheese you can use parmesan cheese you can use uh, monterey jack uh, just you know but i like to shred it up pretty fine now after you get it in there you kind of have to mush it down you know push push it down because the more you compact it in the more meat mixture you can get in so we're going to go make another layer and depending on how big your peppers are uh, you may get several layers and then again you may just get a couple it depends on how short or tall they are okay now we've put another layer of meat and we're going to put another layer of cheese so i'm just going to use my fingers they've been washed several times and again i'm going to press it down as far as i can now this pepper is a little full but this pepper i've got room for a little more filling and i think i can squeeze a little more filling into this one here on the top make it nice and full well let's go ahead and put some more on this other one too that way they'll be even and we're going to put a little bit more cheese and we're going to kind of mush it down so that it gets mixed in with the um, meat and it'll stick better if you make a little bit of a mess that's okay the cheese is going to kind of fall all over the place. All right, so now we have our three peppers here. And we're going to match up our little hat. Orange with the orange, and yellow with the yellow, and red with the red. Try to line up the little indentations so that they kind of match. And then we're going to put these in the oven for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees and you want to kind of keep an eye on them so that the cheese doesn't burn but 30 minutes at 350 degrees is about the right time so let's um, get my pot holders over here and we're going to put these in the oven again be sure you can wear some good pot holders you don't burn yourself and I'm gonna put these in the oven and set the timer for 30 minutes sometimes I put a little water at the bottom to kind of help steam it but then the peppers have got quite a bit of water in them but let's put a little bit about a tablespoon of water and that'll help steam it and through the magic of TV and video, here is a completed set of peppers. This one, as you can see, got a little overdone. But don't those look pretty? Let me hold them up for you. So we have the orange and the yellow and the red. They have the little top on them. Now, you can eat these right away. But if you want to put them away for another day, you need to wait for them to cool down to room temperature and then put them in freezer Ziploc bags and date them. And then you can just take out, I usually pack each individual one separately, and then you can take them out for a mighty tasty dinner. So see you next time. Be sure and check our blog, lottie.ladies.com. Bye.